The UFC has so far announced 10 fights for the blockbuster UFC 300 card and each and every one of those fights can knock your socks off. You've got Wei Li defending her strawweight belt against Yan Xiaonan and Justin Gagey defending his BMF title in a lightweight fight against Max Holloway. You've even got Prohaska, Aljamain Sterling, and Kayla freaking Harrison gracing the event. What else do you guys need? Dana White versus Ariel. Considering UFC 300 doesn't have a main event yet, I don't know, that's not a bad idea. So far, 2024 has been great for MMA fans. The UFC has scheduled six title fights in the first four months, with two already in the rearview mirror. At UFC 297, Duplessis defeated Sean Strickland to become the middleweight champion of the world. And Raquel Pennington beat Myra Bueno Silva to win the bantamweight crown vacated by Amanda Nunez, who, by the way, is also contemplating a return to action after retiring just last year. In February, we have Alexander Volkanovsky defending his featherweight crown against Ilya Topuria. In March, it's Sean O'Malley versus Marlon Vera for the bantamweight title. And in April, it's chaos in the form of UFC 300, which features a straw weight title fight between Wei Li and Yan Xiaonan, a lightweight BMF title fight between Justin Gagey and Max Holloway. What else do we need? This fight alone can headline any UFC card, but UFC 300? That's how outrageous the event will be, particularly when we take into account the mouth-watering lightweight fight between former champions champion Charles Oliveira and rising star Armand Sarukian. UFC 300 also features a bantamweight clash between former champion Holly Holm and two-time Olympic gold medalist and PFL royalty Kayla Harrison who will be making her UFC debut. My goodness that will be one hell of a fight. But what about former bantamweight champion Aljamain Sterling's featherweight debut against Calvin Cater? or the lightweight heavyweight clash between former champion Prohaska and Rakic, or the bantamweight duel between former champs Cody Garbrandt versus Davison Figueredo. We've also got cracking fights like Jim Miller versus Bobby Green and Bo Nickel versus Cody Brundage. Those 10 fights alone make UFC 300 the greatest event in the history of combat sports. But the crazy thing is, we still have more. Rumor has it that Dana White will likely add three to four more fights on the card, including the main event, which hasn't been announced yet, that it may feature Duplessis' first title defense against Israel Adesanya. Uncle Chael Sonnen recently said that Duplessis versus Adesanya is being worked on for UFC 300, but that's pretty much up in the air right now, and we'd be better off without taking Chael's word for it because he rarely hits the mark. So what are the other options here? Conor McGregor won't be back until June, so options are a bit limited. Islam is observing Ramadan from March to April, so he may be out. My guess is that Leon Edwards is probably defending his welterweight belt against Bilal Muhammad, and while it may not be an exciting main event, considering the rest of the card, it is one fight that makes the most sense. There aren't many other options available, and if we look back at UFC 200, a similar situation made Dana and the company scratch their heads. Misha Tate headlined that card with a title defense against Amanda Nunez, who at the time was not a big draw. In hindsight, it was a good fight, but it wasn't a blockbuster fight then. And considering how UFC 300 is brewing, UFC 200 main event wouldn't even get the co-main event spot if it happened in April of 2024. The UFC believes that UFC 300 will sell itself because of its milestone number, so they might not feature their biggest stars. Instead, we might see a couple of title fights and maybe a special appearance like they did with Brock Lesnar, the Vanilla Gorilla, back in UFC 200. Is Kayla Harrison that special appearance, or is there more? Given recent happenings, my best guess is that the special appearance might be like a George Masvidal possibly rematching with Ben Askren. The main event could be Leon versus Bilal. The rest of the card already has recognizable names. I briefly hoped for Adi Sanya versus Duplessis, but the timing, I don't know if it's gonna work. So here we are. Disappointing to the extreme that we may not get a blockbuster main event like the trilogy between Alex Pereira and Israel Adesanya for the light heavyweight title. Now that would be a banger. 
Whether deserved or not, a third fight between those two would draw a huge audience. Their history is already packed with drama. Alex defeated Adesanya twice in kickboxing and once in MMA, including a couple of memorable knockouts, but Adesanya bounced back with a spectacular knockout in their most recent fight at UFC 287 in 2023. Even though Adesanya recently lost to Sean Strickland, he promised a quick shot at the title upon his return. But does it have to be at 185 pounds? Some fights go beyond recent victories and losses, and sometimes you need to think outside the box. So why not wrap up this trilogy at a historic event like UFC 300, with Alex Pereira and Adesanya facing off one more time for the 205 pound belt? While this fight may not have been the first choice to headline UFC 300, it's the matchup that makes the most sense as far as popularity and numbers are concerned. Especially after Stipe turned down the opportunity to potentially headline the event against Tom Aspinall for the interim heavyweight title. The title was perhaps why Stipe may have said no because he wants to fight for the real title and the UFC would never strip Jon Jones of his belt unless he does some shady stuff. I don't know, maybe more shady stuff? It's a really tricky situation. But that doesn't mean we can't think out of the box and roll out a couple of wild card entries. It's true that the UFC has a lot of big names already booked for the upcoming months, making it seem like they've backed themselves in a corner with UFC 300 approaching, but the world's top promotions always find a way to make crazy things happen. In February, Alexander Volkanovsky faces his toughest challenge at featherweight in the form of Ilya Topuria at UFC 298. If Volk gets a quick finish and leaves the cage without any injuries, we all know Volk, he's down to scrap. I don't think that he would mind a quick turnaround. Also, if Sean O'Malley beats Marlon Vera in a convincing manner at UFC 299, he's also about his bag. He will be a solid wildcard entry to the main event of UFC 300 as well. Here's the blockbuster idea. Alex Volkanovsky versus Sean O'Malley for the featherweight belt. Just like that, UFC 300 could boast what might be the biggest main event of 2024 with Alex Volkanovski looking to solidify his legacy and O'Malley aiming for two division champ status as with many of the UFC's most memorable moments this scenario practically writes itself but here's our final roll of the dice on New Year's Eve Conor McGregor announced his return against Michael Chandler in a middleweight fight in June but then Dana White came out he denied those rumors considering the two have been training for each other since the ultimate fighter a two and a half month camp is perfect for a fight of gigantic proportions especially when they won't have to cut a significant amount of weight mcgregor versus chandler would be the perfect main event for ufc 300 it's true that the notorious has lost his shine in fighting terms but he's still the biggest star in the sport the guy who moves the needle and the man who brings the most amount of money to the table so there's nothing better than him main eventing ufc 300 especially given the fact that he's missed out on ufc 200 this is the ufc's chance to blow the roof off who do you think will be the main event of UFC 300? Main event that I would love to see the most is Alex Volkanovski versus Sean O'Malley. That's a fight that I would absolutely love to see. Anyways, to stay up date with all the latest stuff, MMA, I also document my jiu-jitsu journey. Please sub to this channel. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you on the next one.